Hi! So I promise we haven't turned into all lamps all the time, but I uh, managed to run across through sheer dumb luck a pretty good way to frost glass into a milk glass appearance. Uh, so I wanted to make a video about that. So here we are. Um, at the beginning of the year I bought these table lamps from Ikea. I'm going for a mid-century modern theme in my home because of course I am, and I liked these kind of wacky lamps that had the brass look to them, and this kind of mushroom cap glass bowl thing with the bare bulbs was an interesting look. Trouble is, the bare bulbs are a little bit difficult to have close to your face. Uh, it's just a little bit too bright to have where I have these uh, next to a sofa. They're difficult to look at directly, and even dimmed down low, it's, it, it, I don't even think Ikea still makes this lamp, so I think enough people, you know, have had this issue. Um, it was better with globe bulbs, and in fact I think this looks better with globe bulbs, that's the spherical ones in here. Um, but my favorite warm glow bulbs, at least until recently, were not available in the uh, frosted globe, so these are just regular A19 bulbs. Anyway. I had thought, you know, I think this shape of glass would look pretty good as a milk glass. Now when you look online for like how to frost glass, there's tons of ways to do it. You can actually frost it with etching cream, which is based of sulfuric acid, I think, um, which actually etches the glass. There are also spray products that you can use which will make the same frosted glass appearance, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted milk glass, so it appears white, not frosted and transmits light through that, because I thought that would look pretty sharp. Well, here's how that went. Um, let me put this around here. This is the light illuminated. This is with it not illuminated. This looks like real milk glass to me. And as I said, as you will find out, this was sheer dumb luck. This was me on a whim thinking this might work, and it did. <laughs> um, now this, the application here is not perfect, and I screwed this one up. I had to take the coating off of this one. I'll explain that. But let me tell you, at a glance, this thing looks like factory white glass. Let me move out of the way, because I'm wearing a white shirt. Doesn't this look great? This is, this is, I think, a better look for this lamp anyway. And it's transmitting most of the light through the glass. So I had these, um, I had the one frosted and the one naked in front of a wall and the spot of light it was creating on the wall was a very similar brightness between these two. So the majority of the light is still getting transmitted through the glass, probably losing a little bit, but it's not much. And a nice thing about these lamps is they are open at the bottom, so you still get all the downlight around them. I really like this lamp design. I just think the clear glass was a little too quirky. And this here makes it perfect. So what is this? Here's where things get nuts. Equal parts water, craft paint, and white glue. That's all this is. Now, uh, Elmer's Glue All, uh, you may know it as PVA glue, and this is not the best PVA glue in the world. I have heard conflicting reports on whether this is going to yellow with time. It might. We'll find out. But as far as the consistency, so what I needed to, this stuff dries clear. And I need paint to be thinned sufficiently so that light will transmit because it's, it's opaque. And I also wanted it to be thinned out with water a little bit, but I needed it to have some viscosity so it will actually stick to the glass. So literally I was like, because I've looked online, guides to frost glass. Nobody talks about how to do this. I found a f like something on how to make your own milk glass, but nobody was talking about like for a light fixture. So I wasn't sure, like you can paint glass white and it'll look like this if you paint the inside. But I wanted something specifically for a light fixture, and my on a whim guess works. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Um, the equal parts are by weight, by the way. So, 
to do this the way I've done it, it's very messy. Because what you're basically going to do is um, pour it into here and you need to use too much. And you're going to rotate this around until it's all coated. Then you flip it upside down, stacked on like some cups or something, and let it drip out. So it's going to make a mess. And you need to clean this very, very well before you start. But I got this like contractor garbage bag that I can put over the desk here. Voiceover addendum. School glue, Elmer's school glue, is a different product from Glue All. They're like a multi-purpose product. And that supposedly yellows more readily. So that could be why some people say that Elmer's glue yellows and other people say it doesn't really yellow. I don't know, but definitely do not use school glue. You want to use the Elmer's glue all or a higher quality PVA glue if you have one readily available. So as I said, it is 20 grams or Sorry, it is equal parts by weight. So what I found was a good amount to make for this was 20 grams of water, 20 grams of glue, and 20 grams of the craft paint. Um, this is glossy paint. I don't know if that matters or not. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, right. Um, so this is, so I don't think I'm doing a Christmas light video this year. Uh, this isn't painting light bulbs, but it's close. And I'm just doing this on Ken Extras, but you could, conceivably use a colored paint. Don't know what that would look like. Um, the problem with doing the Christmas lights is you need a very, very intense coloring. And I think that using craft paints like this is just, it's hard to strike that balance. You really need to be like a dye, something transparent. So those transparent paints, which are still over there in the set, worked out pretty well, but for this, I'm just shocked how well this works. So what I'm gonna do is first and foremost, get 20 grams of water in a cup here. I will be back. Okay, so this isn't the greatest scale, so hopefully it works pretty well. It's a different one than I used the first time. But I found that the best order, because again, this is the third time I've done this, is to do the water, then the paint, then the glue. Um, I don't know if it's worth shaking this. Does it actually say it shake well? It does. Well, that's possibly slightly problematic. I will explain what would make this prop what would make this process even better. I'm gonna let that sit upside down for a little bit and wait. Um, so if you had a vacuum chamber, this would be, uh, you could get all the bubbles out of the, I'm just making sure the scale stays awake. If you had a vacuum chamber to put the mixture in and actually get all the bubbles out of it, that would be ideal. I don't. Um, it, it turned out to not be much of a problem, but there are, uh, there are a few spots where bubbles made slight imperfections. I mean, I've seen this in commercially made stuff. Um, I mean, perfections on this level, so I don't, I'm not too bothered by it, but that would make things a little bit better if you had that option. So I'm just letting this sit upside down, so hopefully the bubbles that I made go up to the top. It's been a few days since I did this, otherwise I might not have cared. And so trying not to introduce bubbles. Adding paint until the scale reads 40. And now for the glue. Actually, I'm gonna take the, the nozzle off and just pour it. And of course, I'm going till the scale reads 60.
good luck getting the cap off the bottle again. That's always a fun, fun process. So anyway, now it's a mix, it's a stir well. So I got a popsicle stick or a craft stick. Are these, uh, are they known as popsicle sticks in other parts of the world? I don't know. And you're just gonna stir and stir and you're gonna try not to stir violently because that's how you get more bubbles into the solution. Less bubbles is more better. How y'all doing? Enjoying your December? I'm mixing paint and glue and water in a cup in the basement talking to a camera. What a weird life I lead. But like I said, thrilled by how well this worked. Now I can already see a little bit of bubbles. I don't know if I'm adding them now or if they were there. Oh well. Um, since I did screw up, let me put this on the table. Since I did do a coat, so here's how I screwed it up. I'll explain that while I'm stirring. Uh, the first time I did this, the inside appeared to be dry, uh, but the, the drip edges were still a little bit wet. So what I decided to do in my infinite wisdom was put the thing upside down in my oven when it was turned off and then preheat it to like 200 degrees. Um, I did that so like there wasn't thermal stress on the glass and I let it sit in, sit in there for 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. And what happened was it wasn't quite dry and some combination of the heat and it being upside down caused the buildup around the edges to fall back towards the center. And so there were these weird lines that showed up. It cracked badly and it just didn't work. So I would not recommend doing that. Just let this air dry for at least five hours. Might even want to do overnight. Um, and that's what happened here on the other one. I will show you the, the small imperfections on that one, which um, which were because I, I didn't apply it so thoroughly, which I'm going to try to avoid on this one. So yeah, my theory, which led me to this mixture was, maybe I already said this, but the glue will dry clear. I did say that. So it's only one third pigment from the paint, but I needed to be, th I wanted it to be thinned with the water, but not so thin that the paint will just like sheet off. And also it's not such a thin coating that it's gonna flake really easily. So thinning it with the water, taking away some viscosity, putting glue back in, adding some viscosity. And this glue generally dries a little bit flexible so hopefully it doesn't crack over time. We'll find out. And as I said, it may, it may yellow with time. It may be worth getting a better PVA glue, but I've also considered that um, this is under glass. So that glass absorbs most, ordinary glass absorbs most UV. And I'm using LED light bulbs. So they're, they should not be causing yellowing on their own. Uh, but yeah. It, it may yellow with time, we'll see. But so far, I was just, after I tried this, I was like, this worked. I tested this, oh yeah, right. I actually tested this on a wine glass before I committed to putting it on the, the lampshades. Because I thought, well, how, how much light will it transmit? So I just did a wine glass and used like my phone flashlight and said, you know, this looks pretty good moved on to the real thing. I think it's probably stirred enough. I've been scraping the bottom this whole time to make sure that the glue doesn't latch on somewhere. We are going to need um, four cups positioned as legs. I mean, you could use something else, but the cups seemed convenient so that there is an air gap and it can dry. So let me test that as way too far apart. Okay. Well, 
What I tried to do at first, but it, it just, it didn't seem to make too much of a difference is I tried to use a spoon. The, the bubbles that are in here are right around the edges. So I tried to use like a spoon and keep the bubbles from entering the solution. I just don't think that by the time it didn't help is what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to elaborate in ways that aren't making any sense. I think the bubbles for the most part are just not gonna show up in the end. So again, after this has been cleaned really, really well, just pour this on the inside surface. I think I needed pretty much all of it. And just do this until you get it all coated. Now the tricky thing is the shape of the glass because what ended up happening with the other one, I didn't get this inside surface completely coated, which doesn't really matter because you can't quite see it. But that, that was a problem that I'm gonna try to avoid doing on this one. There are more bubbles. Eh, hopefully they either work their way down, because that is that is the other thing. I'm gonna put this upside down. The bubbles may work their way down with gravity. But you can also just keep rotating it and you know recovering the parts with the bubbles. Also, while it's wet, you can try to pop them. That's what I, I was doing that. You can just go at them with the popsicle stick and see if you can pop them. The worst ones anyway. And also just scrape the glass while it's wet you have a lot of time uh, but yeah if I had a vacuum chamber that's definitely what I would do is vacuum out put, put this mixture under vacuum and, and force all the bubbles out but I do not have a vacuum chamber yet is actually working pretty well. I'm just gonna have to go you know roll it around and completely cover up all the lines that I'm making here. But what happens is just holding it like this there's a big pool in the center again. So you just repeat what we were just doing. See? Well, hopefully you can see. So on the inside, I should turn this around so you can see there it is. You just kind of have to watch it because it pools up again. And when we get to the edge, that's going to be the hard part. Because it, it's going to start dripping. It's going to be inconvenient. Like right there. It almost dripped on me. So as I said, this is messy. You will make messes. Embrace the mess. Life is messy. There are definitely more bubbles this time, maybe from shaking the paint bottle. I don't remember how I did it the first time. But it may also be that they're just not going to stay there when it starts drying. I don't know. I actually think I'm going to pour all of it in here. Either I have a little more glue than last time it seems a bit thicker, so it's not quite 
like I'm not getting the edges covered yet without dripping, which is confusing. You could probably use like a paintbrush, but you're gonna get brush strokes. That's why I'm doing it this way, just to hopefully avoid them. And what's probably the best thing to do, let me turn this around, because now I am getting drips almost to the edge here, is just kind of stand it vertically and very slowly rotate it cover that inside edge and start tipping it more and more forward up oh, see almost dripped out there this is where it's not fun and a brush stroke around the edges might be fine I don't know I can see the bubbles are largely migrating to the to the edges so maybe that's what the thing was it's just it's a thick enough coat that the bubbles are gonna fall down and slide away, if that makes sense. Hopefully so, because then like the vacuum chamber is not really needed at all. There's our first drip. We got one. Oh, lots of them. Yay. I'm kind of deliberately letting it get messy because like I said, I screwed up the other one a little bit too much. because I did not completely get the edges covered. I got a little paint on my thumb. And now my pinky, it might be better to wear gloves. Uh, this stuff is pretty easy to get off, at least while it's a little bit wet. Oh, we're missing some coverage on the uh, parts that would be very visible. I gotta cover them up here. Come on now. This is an exciting video, isn't it? Oh crap. Oh, I really touched a lot there. I'm really just watching where the like big glob is on the inside and trying to get it to move where there isn't coverage. Get that spot. Okay. And there's an area here that needs more coverage. That ought to work itself through with some spins. This, what you're seeing there, if you can see that, that's paint that's on the outside for me touching it. So I will need to clean that off. But you can, you can kind of do that even once it's dry. I cleaned all of this off to do this the second time. It was a bit of a pain, but not so bad. Okay, so now what I would recommend doing before I put this down is getting the glob, because there's still a substantial glob on the inside, letting, holding it vertically like I'm holding it now for a while, letting the glob move to one spot. Ooh, I've got some big runs on the back. I'll have to fix that. And then holding it like this before you put it on the cups. Try to get the bulk of the dripping 
over with and in one spot so it doesn't all stick to the cups or whatever you're using to stand this up on. And now just let it dry for a long time. I'm going to go and clean up the spills that got on the outside of the glass just with like a wet paper towel and wash my hands. So to explain this stuff here, this is like a very thin layer of paint that's on the outside. So that'll just wash right off. Um, that is a bubble. Hopefully it's visible on camera. I can't really see it on the screen. But it's very small. There's another little bubble there. And it may, my, it may be falling. It's hard to say. But like I said, vacuum chamber. Get rid of those bubbles. Man, this would be freaking perfect. But all this stuff that's on the outside, you know, this will just clean right up. not not a huge problem and you can also do it after it dries so most important thing is let this all drip out and um, wait a long time for it to dry that there is what one of the bubbles kind of looks like after it dries there's another one over here where's my finger oh So they're very, very minor. If I widen back up just so you can see, the hot spot is, of course, where the light bulbs are. And it's a little bit dim in the center, but I don't know if that's the thickness of the glass or the thickness of the coating. I'm not sure, but overall, this looks just great. It really looks great. I'm trying to see a good what it, what it really looks like in person. It's hard to uh, photograph lamps. So that's about it. It's pretty straightforward and uh, pretty easy and looks nearly perfect. <laughs> I, I just, yeah. Um, I was blown away that just my, my first thought of what about one third paint, water, and glue worked so well. Um, yeah, not trying to toot my own horn because I was just as surprised as you might be. Uh, but yeah, you just let this dry for quite a long time. Uh, you'll need to probably scrape off the drips because some of them are going to stay there. Oh, and then right, I was going to talk about... So what I messed up was I didn't get the very edge covered. 100% and I didn't think it was going to matter because of the lamp but you can see this in certain areas so that's why I was trying my hardest to get this to actually cover up all this stuff but when it's in position it is hard to see and you can just uh, you know get the good side and the bad side so how's that bubble doing is it still there You know what, I think it popped. So that, it, I don't know how important having a vacuum chamber really is. I'm sure it would help something. Uh, but yeah, it seems a lot of the bubbles do pop as it dries and or they just slide down the edges. So I will um, do, uh, I'm gonna start editing this video together before this is dry. Um, let me see if you'll be able to, this is kind of risky, but I'm gonna do it anyway. You can judge the transparency with like a phone flashlight. Is that glowing for you? I can see it on my end, but the room lights might be messing it up. So that that's an option for you, but this looks, this looks just about as good as this. So if you get a little paint on the outside, it's okay. You can clear it off. And as I said, this, I completely, screw this up and took all the paint off. 
That was not easy. What I mainly did was I used, um, I let it soak in water for a while, and then I just scrunched up some aluminum foil and just scraped it off the glass. Uh, I thought a magic eraser or a melamine foam pa pad would work well. Uh, it kind of didn't. It was mostly just friction, like scraping action. Um, so this is probably going to have a couple of spots that are a bit dark because there's flakes on it, but if you don't screw up the first time like I did, you're going to get some, uh, what I think are some pretty, pretty fabulous results. So if you got something, if you have a clear light fixture or something that you want to turn into milk glass and still transmit light through it, this will work, at least in the short term. Um, we'll see how long it lasts with time. If you were to put incandescent bulbs in here, uh, I don't know what the heat might do to it, so I definitely would not suggest that. I'd stick with LED only. Uh, CFLs would be okay if you still got some lying around. Uh, yeah, but what do you think? I'm so pleased. It's, it's like it's like those True Tone light bulbs that this worked so well. The, when I tried it, I was like, holy cow, this is great. Uh, so if you have a use for it in your life, give it a shot. Um, if you're not in a country where Elmer's is a thing, just look for PVA glue. Oh, right. I should put should have put this at the very beginning. Um, so that was me recording the thing about don't use school glue, which I stuck somewhere earlier in the video. Uh, I'm just sitting here like smiling at the camera tooting my own horn. So let's end this.